Okay, so here is a recent tweak that I thought about, which is when you're growing plants hydroponically, particularly in the cracky method, you can crowd them closer together because they do not have to fight each other for water. Um, now this is an experiment, but the idea here is that I'm taking an oasis cube and planning to start multiple seeds in it by making holes with a pencil tip with the idea of getting multiple plants out of this. But there's also a thing that sometimes if you plant multiple seeds in one hole like this, you will find that if one of them sprouts, it kicks out the others, the roots go in strange places, and it's not a terribly good effect if you ask me. So. Um, I've got these winter boar kales. This plant can grow two to three feet tall and produce leaves over an extended period of time. Makes it a very attractive plant for commercial use. So it's a little bit fiddly, but I'm just going to take those tweezers and put a seed in each one. I don't know, in a large scale operation might not be possible you'd have to think about that but the thing is that this is an investment in a way in the sense that if you start several plants in one cube successfully then it's going to produce income for an extended period of time another tweak that i've figured out lately is i used to just let sit these cubes in a pan and let them uh you know germinate and so on then I'd have to struggle with putting them in these little pots and, and all that good stuff so now I'm doing this in a single move here um, and just uh, once I've got it in the pot pick a side put in some of these little rocks and this is uh, all ready to go once it germinates you can just put this in a bucket or whatever you're going to use and let it go so this is kind of similar to using hydroton hydrocon hydrocon whatever it is hydroton um, but you know the pet shop was in the shopping center I go to and I thought ah oh, river rocks yeah this will do so here they go in so this can be soaked down and timed, of course, so that I can see how long it takes for this to come up. So here are some more tweaks that I'm doing to the nutrition on my hydroponics and microbeans. I'd heard about humic acid some time ago and hadn't used it, but humic acid is uh, something that really benefits the plants, provides a home for bacteria and fungi, such as the mycorrhiza I'm adding. So. I did pick this up the other day from my friends at um, Hydroponic Connection in San Francisco. I think this was about $15, $10-$15, so this will go a long ways. And then uh, I'd been putting in some B vitamins and then I remembered that I had this quick start um, solution. There's all kinds of things, but it's basically vitamin B1, thiamine. Uh, it's used in the human body as well as in plants as, as kind of an energizer. So this is all stuff that you can add to your brew to really maximize the growth and nutrition of your plants. One of the things I'm very concerned about in terms of plant nutrition and thus human nutrition is the role that trace minerals play in your system. For instance, copper is used to create RNA which creates protein and selenium creates an amino acid called selenocysteine which is used uh, in the creation of proteins and a deficiency of selenium is associated with increased rates of cancer and of course zinc is very important um, because it's used in enzymes and enzymes are like the catalysts that make a lot of processes in your body run. The other day I was looking at something on YouTube and they mentioned that plants use a combination of carbon dioxide and water to make a weak acid called carbonic acid which the plants put out in order to dissolve minerals that they need for their growth 
and it occurred to me that even though I am putting some azomite in my water and different things, um, there's still a question about whether I'm getting enough for all of the trace minerals that I need. Certainly I've noticed that some of the hydroponic foods, even some of the trace element things, do not contain copper and there's no mention of selenium. So things like azomite and green sand have a wide range of minerals in them and so they are good things to use. And then I had this box of green sand from uh, Flowerland and I thought, well, mm, since the plants are going to make carbonic acid to release minerals, what I should do is take a little pinch of this green sand, which is a very fine powder, and just sprinkle it. I mean, it's so fine you probably can't even see it, but I am sprinkling some green sand on these mung beans, which I started yesterday. Uh, so hopefully these plants will generate some carbonic acid and release some of the chemicals or minerals, particularly trace elements, from the green sand.